So good afternoon, everyone. So nice to see you all today. And thank you, first of all, thank you for um, Design Networking Hub and Nomad Magazine for the invitation. I'm very happy to see you all today and to share our experience in terms of multicultural uh, communication and also collaborations with you and also to introduce the Design Networking Hub for every, uh, all of you here today. So this topic is a very close topic to my heart. In my observation, the always the best design and the best design solutions always come from conversations and exchanges. And this is the exact reason why I find um, Design Networking Hub so interesting, because it's not only a digital tool for uh, efficient and effective uh, exchange of knowledge and resources, but it also creates opportunities for offline encounters like we are all here today. So let's start with Julia. So can you tell us something about the Design Networking Hub? How did it start? What's your goal? And um, what do you want to contribute to the international creative scene through this platform? Yes, all of it uh, started in 2020 when the, um, uh, there was a funding line of the Federal Foreign Office, uh, which was um, meant, uh, aimed to foster the uh, the, the, the prim, uh, primary sectors of design and digital society. Um, and it was located uh, in uh, Europe and or Africa. And um, we uh, decided that the other country on the other uh, side uh, should be Kenya, um, because it's uh, uh, yeah, really an upcoming and a very interesting um, country with a very active design scene and uh, uh, they have a very good educational uh, system in design and um, for us it was always very important to have a concept where we meet on the same level and discuss uh, the problems uh, this we have in society, we have to face in society um, on the same level and um, yes we then thought what do we need and um, it's our deepest uh, thought that we need exchange. We always need exchange and we can't have enough ex exchange uh, to discuss uh, the social problems and uh, challenges we have. Um, and there are so many creative and clever people around the world and uh, we just need to connect them so they can discuss, they can um, have uh, common experiences. And, uh, of course, we had this pandemic situation, so we had to think about a digital solution. Um, and that was the idea of the Design Networking Hub, which is a digital platform, a knowledge and um, networking platform, um, in the first step for the German and Kenyan um, cultural and uh, a creative industry. But, of course, we can think about scaling it up to an uh, brighter um, basis of international uh, connections. We said we start off a pilot group. These are um, five German and five Kenyan designers and architects. Um, and they have the very, very, very big challenge, not only to, it's not that we found people who already have solutions and said, okay, I'm interested in um, and exchanging my solutions, uh, but we we said um, first of all go and find a problem, and after this uh, come together and find together solutions for these uh, challenges. And um, as you can imagine, that is really a, a, a great uh, challenge uh, we gave them. But uh, we found great people, uh, very creative people who are on a very good way. Uh, the project is Agile, so um, the website, when you go on designnetworkinghub.com, um, isn't ready at all. Uh, it's growing. Uh, we are just at the start. We, uh, the, the pilot group um, came together the first time in, well, digitally in uh, June, and we met in September uh, um, and had an ideation workshop. And, um, yes, yeah, so and now we, we, we are constantly filling the design networking hub on the one hand with knowledge and uh, uh, all sorts of information for 
designers, for creatives um, who want to uh, put up an international and intercultural project. We have a blog where you uh, can submit um, blog entries uh, if you have to say something interesting in this field. And we have a matchmaking tool where um, the people can meet. And uh, it's like a, a, a partner dating platform somehow. <laughs> and uh, um, yes, you can put on your profile. And in the moment, it's very new. It's, it's uh, uh, really fresh on uh, the internet. Um, we invite, invite people just to uh, put in their uh, uh, information about a project. They can uh, search for things, they can offer uh, a project or ideas or whatever. Um, it's just uh, our idea and our try to activate an international community to get into exchange. So I think... Yeah, it sounds, uh, it sounds uh, very interesting and I think it's a timely um experience experiment to develop something digital and also physical to enhance the exchange of the com uh, creative community and um it's also very interesting for me maybe this question is to peter hi peter nice to meet you the first time over zoom so yeah it's very interesting for me that um well, I read uh, uh, some of the previous um, interviews uh, of you and you have a very interesting career in terms of cultural exchange. And maybe you can give us a, an idea on how this cultural funding line works at the moment. Uh, first of all, what, what we, as I said, what, what we try to do by, by the means of culture and education, but also by science, by the means of science and, and, and um, um, and beyond is um, to make a foreign policy that is beyond foreign policy of, of governments um, that brings together ra pe rather people than, than, than governments, um, rather societies than nations, if you want to say so. Um, because we think that um, to have a, a, a deep rooted um, relationship between societies, um, it needs people um, it, because governments can change. Um, and uh, the relationships between governments can can deteriorate. Um, and but but if you have a stable basis on the on the people's level, that is something that that won't change that quickly. Um, and that is that is why we um, we um, we have that really strong um, effort in, in in bringing together people or by the means of culture and education. As I said, um, the the idea is um, that that creatives, um, people from different societies, always bring in different perspectives and that um, these projects um, lead to bringing these perspectives together and, and, and in the best case to develop common perspectives in the end. But at the same time, we see that in many places around the world, change um, is, is limited somehow to, to big cities. Um, and, and that is a, I think, is a, is a huge problem. And, and, and by the, the means of, or by what we're funding, we also try to, to overcome um, this, this trap you might go into and, um, and not to deepen the, the rifts that are, that are already existent between, between urban and, and, and rural areas. Um, I think all this 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 idea of networking and bringing together people, um, and, and and doing that in a very sustainable way, um, is being represented by the design networking hub very well, um, because you have a well recognizably sustainable structure being built um, that has, if you want to say so, feed, you know, that gives feedback in both societies that brings together both perspectives, as I said, and, 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 and the, the aim is, is really to create a cooperation on the, on the long run um, at, 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 at eye level. And that is something that we really need. So thank you for all the sharing, Peter. And um, I think, well, when we talk about money, money is very important. And I think just to give you some figures as, as an idea. So there are today, there are more than 
100,000 people working in the creative sector in Germany, and the government is investing about 1 billion euro every year for the foreign policy and cultural policy. And of course, uh, it's also very important to know that when we talk about the creative industry, it's not only about culture and design, and it's also very important as an economic factor. Maybe this question I can uh, direct, uh, divert to um, Alessandra. So what do you think so what's the impact does the creative industry have on the development of a country? Well, uh, I think that creative industries um, have a great impact on uh, any national econ economy. Uh, and we as the German Design Council believe, of course, uh, in the force or power of, of design um, as a strong instrument for designing culture, uh, designing uh, society, and also designing um, products, uh, companies. Um, so, well, uh, we are a partner of the, the project and we are passionate supporters because it's just a perfect match of our mission and vision at the German Design Council. Yeah, and I, I think we're all very curious about what the pilot project is. So, Julia, co correct me if I'm wrong. So, the project started in May 2021, and in September, you select the 10 designers and architects from Germany and Kenya for the pilot project. So, explain to us what the pilot project is and the purpose and goal that you want to achieve through this collaboration. So, the pilot group uh, mainly are 10 people, <laughs> creatives. Um, we had a tender and um, uh, invited just uh, uh, all creatives we could, could get contact to, uh, to send an application. We, we were looking for people who can think out of the box and uh, are curious and are on fire for such an intercultural project. Yeah, here they are. <laughs> 130 uh, applications uh, we've got. And we, we try to, to mix up a group with uh, a lot of different uh, professions. So uh, we have industry design, we have com communication design, interior design, social design, um, architecture. Uh, interior. Uh, so we, we, we really look for a good mixture and uh, uh, see that we have a bright, bright wide range um, of uh, talents uh, coming into this group. And of course, it was said that we have five German and five Kenyan uh, designers. And um, yeah, and he, uh, here we are. And uh, then uh, they had the uh, a challenge to come up in groups and all we said was that at least one German and one Kenyan person has to work together. Uh, we didn't say it have to be three groups, which in the end, uh, how they ended up. Um, and what we uh, said already in the tender that um, they will, we would like them to work on um, projects out of the field digitali digitalization. Um, mobility or uh, living, housing, um, and uh, this mainly uh, uh, shows the whole society that I can't think of a lot of projects that wouldn't fit into <laughs> this selection. We traveled uh, together with a pilot group to Nairobi and uh, met all um, the Kenyan participants together with the Design Kenya Society in Nairobi and uh, had a great time and uh, a very intense working um, uh, uh, days uh, where the, the, the groups were formed, uh, the problems were roughly identified they want to work on and uh, then the whole thing really uh, rolled off and um, yeah, we put some energy and uh, a fun I think, into it, and uh, yeah. yeah. fun is very important. And um, hello, Chezubaya. Maybe you can share with us from your perspective, what do you want to achieve in this project? And maybe you can also tell us about something about the trip the group had in Nairobi and what kind of experience or what kind of things or, or issues or problems or, or opportunities you want the participants to see in this trip. For us, what was most interesting was the intercultural conversation. So our good friends from Germany arrived and just being able to see, so I was watching it through the eyes of our lead facilitator on this project, Mike Moya, who was out with the teams. 
And just to see the level of intensity and interest from both sides was very refreshing. Many times you, you wonder how cross-cultural projects will work. And just having the team in one location in Nairobi and then taking inspiration from the city and then to come and take that and really sit down and discuss projects that actually benefit society. So we believe a lot in, in uh, human-centered design, but specifically community-centered design. There's something Peter said that very often design is, um, changes happen in the urban centers, which is true. But where the solutions are really, really needed is outside the urban centers at the community level. And it was interesting to see the teams, though our teams of designers were largely urban, really trying to drill into what would the community need? And one of the big things we have seen is there are a lot of challenges in the project for those who are designing around social issues. When you look at the current project and how it's going, those who are designing an actual product seem to be a little further ahead than those who are designing for social. Because social, you have to do a lot more research. You have to go back into the community and really hear what they need. And sometimes the challenge with these projects like this is we in the urban centers kind of think we know what the other communities need. But when you go back and you get reviews, it's not really what they want. It is something similar, but has a different use. So for us at Design Kenya Society, just the opportunity to challenge um, a community beyond ourselves, an opportunity to build, an opportunity to be able to collaborate beyond the African continent for us is important. Why? There's a lot of stuff that's available on our continent that is undocumented. One of the biggest challenges of our culture is we are oral. African culture, we tell the stories and pass them down generation to generation as stories, hardly written, just because that's what our tradition has been. So this is one of the many opportunities we are seeking as Design Kenya Society to document Africa. Because when the story comes off the continent, it's, it's, it will be a joint voice. It will be a collaborative um, effort. So for us, those are the big things to really be able to one, challenge cultural beliefs and two, to begin to document a new perspective and showcase for the world really how collaboration can be mutual across the continents. The experiences in every, every person who is part of these exchange programs um, will have an, an, an insight and uh, um, will simply like feel something more with your next ones, with your families, with your, within your professional environment. Yeah, you're just like adapting yourself, you're getting to, to know another culture and know, uh, getting to know how people interact with each other and you start interacting also differently. And yeah. I think, well, I'm a big fan. So first, when I heard from, from the program, well, I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Yeah, you have to, to hear more about it. And maybe now we can uh, meet some of the participants and hear the story from their side. So hi, George. Maybe we can start with you. Can you introduce yourself? What's um, your professions and what, what do you want to achieve through this platform? So my name is George Vakesa. I'm an architect by profession. And it's been a really exciting process it's to start off on a very empty sort of canvas and trying to see uh, how best we can address the three areas that we are focusing on. Myself, I've been in the team that focuses on mobility. We started off with one of the uh, issues in Nairobi, uh, just trying to find a starting point where we can actually have certain symmetries with uh, what can also be solutions that can be applied uh, in a different context. So we have been uh, in conversation, uh, doing sort of weekly meetings and trying to uh, work on a digital space. As an architect, I'm, I'm quite biased towards sketching and using paper, and uh, using a paperless space has been uh, quite a challenge just to think through solutions in that manner. But at the same time, it's a skill that I think in this day and age is one that we really need to have to foster the sort of collaborative effort through digital uh, platforms, which also allow for even faster communication, uh, better ways of uh, researching and even more flexible 
uh, approaches to design that are not too traditional uh, as, 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 as before. Thank you for sharing. And uh, there are three teams in the pilot project group. So George is in the mobility and Philip, you are in digitalization, am I correct? Maybe you can in start with introducing yourself, your profession, what you want to achieve in this program and tell us about your project. Sure, so yeah, I'm Philip. Um, I'm a sustainable product designer um, and I'm finishing right now my uh, sociology studies in Vienna. Like you already told us, um, there are three groups and I'm right now in the group technique or digitalization. We named it um, technique because um, we want to um, enhance and to, to move something uh, with the use of technique. And um, right now, or actually from the beginning, we, we started to see um, the biggest problem or one of many big problems uh, in the food, food production. And um, we are developing right now um, a kind of sensor package which enables people, like people in Kenya, but also in Germany, to um, make like um, food production um, more productive um, for and more attractive and also accessible, like with not too much money. And um, we we spoke to um, farmers in both countries and um, had some interesting in, in, uh, insights and um, working right now on the prototype. So we will have something physically. I don't want to tell too much about it, but um, yeah, it's kind of the first phase of uh, prototyping and the next one would be to try it out in both countries as well to see how it works and um, using this platform to um, yeah not only um, yeah make make um, uh, yeah advertisement for, for our product but also to show how what problems there are and um, what problems we are, we are facing right now and I'm also quite curious to to know that how do you work together it be among different teams, do you speak with each other? Do you share ideas? How do you work with, uh, for example, the German Design Council and also the Society Kenya? How, how, how does it work? What's the dynamic like? It's kind of interesting because um, what's also, I think, so spe special about the pilot group is that the people um, working, um, who, who are in the pilot group are really open-minded and um, also open-minded uh, during the process of designing and um, what we are doing uh, is most of the time um, just inviting other teams to um, uh, meetings and ask them and discuss with them um, how they see uh, the progress they're making and if they have ideas um, how to um, go further. And of course the German Design Council is uh, the yeah, most important part probably about because they're connecting us to uh, companies, to people with more knowledge, to um, experts. And for example, our group, we had a meeting with uh, the Fraunhofer Institute a few weeks ago um, and talked with them about um, new projects and um, how they see or also what they think about our project right now. And it was, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So the German Design Council or the German um, Stiftung Deutsches Design Museum is kind of um, the yeah, communication tool we use um, to, to uh, make the best out of the project. Although we all have an understanding in terms of how important diversity is and how this will help us to change the future and help us to advance, but we at the same time we cannot expect everyone to understand the benefits. So how would you, in your opinion or in, in your word, how would you explain the importance of diversity of multicultural collaborations to the general public? The, the essential aim of all, the essential objective of what we're doing in, uh, in, in cultural diplomacy is peace. Is, is avoiding to come to the point where you have to build weapons and, um, and buy them. Um, and you have to spend money for that. It's, it's about prevention of conflict. It's about um, of getting to know each other and, 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 and living peacefully together. It's all about uh, changing perspectives and it's all about um, questioning. And interestingly enough, uh, this is actually what design is doing. Design is questioning always the status quo. Why is this so? And it's always mm, putting itself into uh, another perspective of um, potential users. So um, 
that's why uh, we think that mm, the design is so so crucial in uh, driving change and um, actually in the change that we need right now because we are currently facing global issues, global problems that we can only um, tackle um, if we do it in collaboration, questioning the needs of um, of another person, of another uh, economy, whatever, um, to get to get to the um, the destination together. So collaboration is all around one interest. I want to know and I want to understand other cultures and being willing to actually go into those spaces. So let me use an example from the the current project. When the German team came in October, now Germans, you like to handle money. Kenyans, we don't handle money. We operate digital money. So we all have a mobile phone. It doesn't matter whether it's smartphone or the very basic phone. We have mobile money and PESA. So it was very interesting watching, um, listening to Mike telling stories about the, our German teams who are like, but you guys don't do cash. Like, we don't. In fact, I, it's, it's so funny because I don't even have cash in my wallet ever. So when I go to now pay my parking ticket, I'm trying to think, okay, where do, where do I get cash? We don't even use credit cards because half of our population is unbanked. Now bring that into a room where people are either used to cash or cards, and we use debit cards a lot more, you know? So what, I like, what I'm learning to do even as an individual is realize that I too have my own biases and assumptions. There's a feeling once in certain parts of the world that other parts are better. So when you go there, you're all awestruck. And then you realize, hey, wait a minute, I have something to bring to the table. So I think for me, my biggest joy is uh, watching projects like these and being involved in many others and having opportunities to speak on international platforms is to be able to showcase that we are so globally diverse, but we are also so close globally, right? So I think, um, thank you very much everyone today. I think it's very important to keep the conversation open and continue and widen also our reach as well. So today is a starting point, I would say. And um, thank you very much. We look forward to see the results and um, to see how the initiative will continue in the future.